Hi there, welcome to another video in my series on differentiating inverse trig functions. And in the previous video, I showed you how to derive the results for the differential of inverse sine x over a, a being a constant, or some people call it arc sine of x over a. It was equal to 1 all divided by the root of a squared minus x squared. And when you differentiate the inverse tan of x over a, then it was equal to a all divided by a squared plus x squared. Now I've got here four questions which use these results. And I'd strongly encourage you to have a go at differentiating them, finding dy dx. So if you'd like to do that, have a go. When you come back, either fast forward to check out the answer quickly, or I'll take you slowly through the work solutions. OK, welcome back then, if you had a go. Now for this first one, y equals the inverse sine of x, then when I compare it to the result that we've got here, the constant a is clearly 1. So this is a nice easy one to start with. The answer then is going to be that therefore dy by dx is going to be equal to 1 divided by the root of 1 squared, which is 1, minus x squared. So nice easy one for starters. 1 over the square root then of 1 minus x squared. Now when it comes on to number 2, y equals the inverse tan or arctan of x over 5. This is fairly straightforward. In this example, the constant a is 5. So we can see from this result here, all we need to do is substitute a as 5. So therefore, again, we have dy dx equals a, which is 5, all divided by a squared, so that's 5 squared, which is 25, plus the x squared. Now for number 3, we've got y equals the inverse sine of x squared. And to do this, we need to turn to the chain rule. So what we do is we let, say, t equal x squared. So what we've got then is y equals the inverse sine of just simply t. So therefore, y equals the inverse sine of t. So using the chain rule, remember that dy by dx is equal to dy by dt times dt by dx. So to get dy by dx, I need to do dy by dt. So if y equals the inverse sine of t, then turning to this result here, all I'm doing is replacing the x with t and the a with 1. So we end up with dy by dt as being 1 divided by the square root of 1 squared, which we know is 1, minus, and then for x squared, remember this will be t squared, I've got x squared all squared. I'll just write it as x squared all squared at this stage, okay? And then I need to multiply this by dt by dx. So if I differentiate t with respect to x, we're just going to get 2x. I'll put that in brackets there. So cleaning this up, what we've got then is 2x all over the square root then of 1 minus x to the power 4. And there you have dy dx. Now for number 4, we've got y equals the inverse tan then of x all divided by x plus 1. And for this one, again, I'm going to use the chain rule. I'll just say let t equal x over x plus 1. So we've got t equaling x over x plus 1. And so from this, it would follow then that y would be equal to the inverse tan of t. So to get dy by dx, 
f4 dy by dx is going to be equal to well we need to do dy by dt first of all so if y equals the inverse tan of t turning to this result here replace the x with t a is just 1 so dy dt would be 1 over 1 plus t squared okay so we got 1 all over 1 plus t squared but t is this value here so if I square that I'm going to get x squared over x plus 1 all squared okay so I've got that let's just put that in square brackets there and now I need to multiply this by dt dx so I need to differentiate this with respect to x and so I'm going to need to use the quotient rule so if I just put another square bracket up here using the quotient rule I'm going to have the denominator which is all squared x plus 1 all squared and then I take the denominator and I multiply it by the differential of the numerator differential of x with respect to x is just 1 and then it's minus and then I take the numerator x and multiply it by the differential of the denominator differentiating x plus 1 with respect to x just gives me 1 and then if I square off that bracket there we've got that now cleaning this up when it comes to the top here well taking this one here I can see that I'm going to get x plus 1 if I expand the bracket out minus x so that's just going to be 1 here and so 1 times the 1 here is going to be 1 and then this is going to be divided by and then if I multiply this one with x plus 1 squared then I'm going to get x plus 1 all squared and then multiplying x plus 1 all squared with this fraction here the x plus 1 squares get cancelled just leaving me with plus x squared and then finally if I tidy this up I can see that I've got the 1 on the top there expanding the bracket I'm going to get x squared plus 2x plus 1 and then if I add it to this x squared here I'm going to end up with 2x squared plus 2x plus the 1 and there you have it okay so I hope it's given you some idea anyway about how we can go about differentiating inverse trig functions then